What's up, gang? It's Friday, so you know what time it is. It is time for What the Fitness. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment for the algorithm. Today, we have a new guest. I don't know his name. It's from an account called Laura Carnivore Lifestyle. So I'm sure everything will be evidence-based. It has a tag of Simone Gizondi. Let's see what they got to say about higher cholesterol lowers death rates. I have a feeling they may be confusing correlation for causation. Did you know that around the world, the elderly with the lowest cholesterol levels oh, the have the shortest lives? And this has been proven in many research studies. Did you know that with all cause mortality, the only mortality number that really matters, those with cholesterols of under 160, which would make your doctor very happy, have a large increase in death from cancer <laughs> and from all-cause mortality. Yes, they do. Did you know that the very few studies which show any benefits at all from the use of statin drugs were not due to the lowering of the person's cholesterol, but rather were due to a very slight anti-inflammatory effect of some of the statin drugs? Did you know that fish oil and cod liver oil have a far better anti-inflammatory effect without all the dangerous side effects? So this is an example of a truth and a lot of lies. Yes, is it true that in elderly, you have a greater risk of mortality, especially from cancer, with low cholesterol levels? Yes, but these are not human randomized control trials. These are cohort studies, this is epidemiology. And so what they are looking at is people with low cholesterol versus people with high cholesterol above age, whatever, probably 65, who have cancer, who has a higher risk of dying? it's people with low cholesterol. Does that mean that cholesterol is protective? No, cancer is a wasting disease. Cancer is a disease where the people who are most likely to die are the people who waste. And the people who waste are going to have low cholesterol because they don't have appetite, they have a hard time eating, they are very frail. It's hard to find people who are frail who have high cholesterol. And so this is what we like to call reverse causality. It is not that high cholesterol is protective against mortality in the elderly. Rather, elderly with higher cholesterol, especially for cancer, are more well-fed and more resistant to the wasting that is caused by cancer and cancer treatments. As far as his statements on statins not lowering risk, that's not really true. There are trials that show that statins lower the risk of cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular events and mortality. Now statins do have some side effects. Some people can get muscle pain. Some people can have a slight reduction in insulin sensitivity. And so we have to look at these things on balance. But on balance, it does appear to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, not all trials show this. Well, why is that? Many people who start on statins already have significant damage done to their endothelium from years of not taking care of themselves, from years of high LDL cholesterol, from years of smoking. You're trying to undo a lot of negative effects over the accumulation of your lifetime when you're starting statins at 40, 50, 60 years old. And if you're looking out a year or two after you've given statins, a lot of times it's really hard to see a benefit because LDL cholesterol and how it affects your risk of cardiovascular disease, it is a lifetime exposure risk. And we know this because of the Mendelian randomization studies. People have genetic polymorphisms where some people secrete more or less LDL naturally based on these polymorphisms. These are random polymorphisms meaning they don't affect other areas of metabolism. And so it actually is basically a lifelong human randomized control trial. And if you look at the lifetime exposure to LDL cholesterol, there is a linear effect of LDL cholesterol on the risk of cardiovascular events and mortality. We know that LDL cholesterol, native LDL cholesterol, not small, not oxidized LDL cholesterol, regular old LDL cholesterol can penetrate the endothelium just fine. We know this. We have tons of mechanistic data to show this. When LDL penetrates the endothelium, it has a protein on it called ApoB. ApoB then undergoes modification in the intima that causes the LDL to be retained inside of it. Being retained inside of it causes inflammation 
to migrate to that area and then you get things like macrophages and foam cells and this happens over the course of a lifetime and it causes these blockages. And so a lot of these people say, well, it's the inflammation that does it. Yes, inflammation is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, but inflammation follows the damage to the endothelium that is caused by LDL cholesterol penetrating the endothelium, being retained in the intima via the modification of ApoB protein, and then that causes this cascade of response to happen. High cholesterol levels are not healthy, but in elderly who suffer from cancer, people who are more likely to survive are better fed, they're more resistant to wasting, and yes, they have higher cholesterol levels. But again, this is reverse causality. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Catch you next week.